All right, this is our tutorial for doing the spring suspension system. Let's check, yep, we're recording. This is the spring suspension system for uh, the CAD component for the task. Uh, all the numbers that I'm picking, I'm guessing them, I'm approximating them based on the model that I have. You are going to use a variety of measuring your own springs and components or guessing it to make it look by eye. The first, we're going to start by making the shaft down the center of the suspension system, and then I plan on doing uh, the outer case, um, the connections to the hub, and I'm going to do the helical spring last, because I think it's the most um, CPU intensive part of the task. Uh, the first thing we want to do, as we've done previous designs, we go and start our sketches and start making bodies. Instead of that, we want to start by making a new component. We want to actually have our, um, we want to start on a good footing. We're going to start by making individual components so they can move relative to each other. So over here in assemble, new component and uh, type component one. I can even call this um, center shaft. Uh, press okay. And so now as we look, this is, is, is its own component. It's, named component one. Uh, and we have center shaft. And um, when I'm in here now, I can sketch and start making my shape that I want. Um, I, I already, we already know how to do sketching, so we're gonna, just gonna start by making a cylinder. So I press cylinder, press anywhere on the base. So now I've gotta get the, the thickness and I believe uh, let's go 30 millimeters. 30 millimeters thick by, and the height, I'm going to do 300 millimeters tall. So this over here is going to be the base of our suspension system. Um, and if we look over here, this is the body that we have over here. Um, on our suspension, we also have two threads, a thread at the top and a thread at the bottom. So we will, um, if we press to create, we can see we have the thread function. So we're going to press that thread and then we can press this curved surface over here. And if we see by default, it's going to thread the whole surface. As we zoom in, we can see it has like a threaded pattern. We don't want to do the full length, so we're going to change this option over here, to say not the full length. And in my example over here, the thread goes down, looks like 45. Do we only want it to go down 45? Um, let's just say it's an M, we can keep all these default settings. Um, we do have the choice where we can either model it or not model the thread. So if we don't model the thread, it's easier on GPU. Um, and we can always uh, finish our design and then edit this particular thing to model the thread so we can get it into 3D images or whatever. Um, let's see if I model it, see how that looks. So I have the thread modeled. Um, yep, offset zero, length is 45, size is 30 uh, because it was a 30, 30 millimeter, millimeter diameter shaft. Class G, whatever, right hand, yep, we'll keep all these the same. And you press OK. And now look, we have this lovely modeled thread over here. Uh, we have this lovely modeled thread. Uh, we're going to do the same thread at the bottom, uh, at the lower end of it. We'll go the same, we're going to go to thread. So if we look at the actual diagram of thread, it's good to know that the thread can work on both the inside and outside. So you can do um, like the bolt version of a thread or the nut version of the thread depending on each side. And all you've got to make sure is that your, um, that this setting, uh, if we press this, and here we don't want the full length, um, this size, you've got to make sure that the size is the same. And it should um, make the threads perfectly match. So when we end up designing a bolt, um, or if we input a bolt in through the database, we've got to make sure that the bolt is also 30 millimeters. Um, and this one's going to be the same length as before. This one's going to be 45. And yes, we'll model this. And then uh, everything else is good. All right, so we have that. 
The next thing we're going to do, let's start by making the, um, what's the area inside? Oh, my kit, the kit's actually lost it. That's not good. Just give me a second. We're going to make the plunger. We're going to make the plunger inside. Uh, I'll just measure it from this. 100. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make the plunger, and we don't have to make a new component. We don't have to make a new component because in this model, the plunger and the shaft are both going to be moving at the same relative to each other. So we can just... Oh, there's something different. Oh, I'm just seeing something different on here. Hold on, hold on. Um, the bottom is not 30 millimeters. The bottom is smaller because the plunger rests in there. The bottom is 23. So I can fix this. Sketch. I'm going to sketch the bottom over here. This one over here is 23. Uh, 23. Enter. Fifty. So what I'm doing here is the bottom uh, end of the shaft is actually slightly smaller. So I'm getting this out of circle and I'm bringing it up. Negative uh, fifty to cut this over here. So now uh, I'm just going to do the same. Oh, not that button. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a thread. I'm going to press this thread over here. If we see this thread, it automatically has its size changed. It says that its size is 24. It's a 24. Um, and then uh, we, we don't want this one to be the full length. Again, we want this one to be 45. That's just because what our, uh, it's actually this. I think it's 40. Uh, 40. Because that's just what our model shows. Um, and uh, uh, this is what it looks like if you don't model it. You see, it just puts like an image on top. But I want to model it. Uh, full length modeled. There we go. Cool. So now I'm going to make the part. I'm going to make the ring that's going to go around uh, the base. All right. So let's start. Let's make the ring now. So we want to make this part is going to be. Um, it's going to be the same component. The the this is um what is it called like not the diaphragm but it's the um. It's the, like a disc that moves up and down inside the cylinder. And that disc, um, it's going to always move in our particular model with this part. So we can do it inside the same component. We can, so I'm just going to go sketch. I'm going to use this surface because I want it to be aligned with this surface to begin with. And I already measured from my uh, model that it's about um, just under 100. So let's go 98. I press enter, and so now, um, oh, my rotating, I'm not rotating. All right, so I have this disc over here. Oh, that's why, okay. Weird rotations. I don't know why I did that, but you don't have to. Uh, mine is 98. So let's go and extrude. I want to just extrude this disc. And this disc, we have the length there is five millimeters, I think. No, nope, it's 10. 10 millimeters. So um, we've done this before, where if you by default go and extrude it, you want to make sure it's a new body. It's a new body because later we can change the, um, the materials, properties of this. This can be plastic. It doesn't have to be metal like the rest of the, the component. So we'll press new body. All right, so we have this. We're going to do our first part of our printing this model up. We want to, uh, I want to smooth out the edges. So I'm going to use the filleting tool. I'm going to select this and 
this as my two fillets. Um, I can visually drag, drag it in. Uh, if I make it as five, it'll be the whole disk. Um, and then I can press OK. Um, and then I'm also going to, this would actually not be a good plunger because it's not allowing any material to go through. So I'm going to create a sketch on this shape over here and I'm going to make a hole. Uh, hold on, first I want to make a, in the middle is 58 approximately. Over here I want to make a smaller circle of 12 looks nice. So I have this circle over here and these are just going to be holes for us to allow the material to flow through. I'm going to do, make a circular pattern. I'm going to press our original circle and the center point is going to be this point over here. And by default it's three. I want four. I want six holes. Just made it up. Doesn't matter. Press OK. So now we have six equidistant identical holes. Sorry, these are just circles, but we're going to turn them into holes by pressing extrude and then um, holding... I don't have to hold them. Just click all the faces of relevance. I have all these faces selected and then I'm going to drag it in the reverse direction and it should cut the, these holes out. And there we go. So now this, this part over here has holes in it. So as it flows up and down, the liquid, some of the liquid can flow through. Um, oh, this circle was not large enough. I have to fix this original sketch. Oh, sorry, um, not that. Cancel it. Um, when I did my extrusion, when I did my extrusion, I didn't include this inner part as well. There we go, okay. Cool, we got this. Um, now, let's be a bit fancy. Let's make a new component, let's make a washer to go on top of here. Uh, what is this diameter? This diameter was 24, right? 24. Enter, and then over here, we wanna go out. Let's say we wanna 30. Yes. The washer the washer is going to be over here. How big? 34. 34 but to the outside. So 10 yeah. mm radius. No, 24. No, the inside the little between the inside and the outside. Is it 10 mil? Um and then we should go let's give the washer a thickness which in my example, it is tiny. Four millimeters. All right, we have this washer in here now. So now, this design over here, we have a thread and we have a washer, and we can change these materials, uh, let's just change this physical material to like ABS black so we can physically uh, determine it from other things. You just go to plastic, uh, ABS black resin, sure. Can I just make that? Cool. Yeah, cool. Close. Just so we can understand the size difference. Um, and we can design a nut. We can have a different file of a nut that we've uh, purchased, um, that we've made, and we can import it here. But this is an opportunity to show you how, if you're designing this thing, 
all these parts might be unique, you get your factory to machine them, but when you're probably not going to make the nut on your own, you're probably going to go to a company that makes it. That's the reason why we picked a very standard thread size. To insert objects that exist in the real world, we go to insert, um, insert master car components, McMaster, um, and then we are looking in the, we're looking for a nut in this particular case. We know our thread size is M24. So we, that's a metric thread. So if we press metric, and then we go over here, we find the number 24. It's going to give us a list of different, a whole bunch of different th um, nuts we can pick. And in this particular one, I know I want a, uh, any one of these lock nuts. So let's just go class eight lock nut. Um, over here, if we press one of these, just to check, we can go over the individual um, product details. Um, the height, let's go for the smaller one, the height of 24. If I press it, if I go to product detail over here and I press 3D step, um, it's going to be an object that I can put into Fusion 360. So I press 3D step and I press download. And if you give this thing a second to download it, there we go, we have the, the nut in the um, model. And <clears throat> now all we have to do is just align it into this model. We can make this 90 degrees. And then I believe we can use our, um, we can use our align tool. We can go to modify, align. We can align this face with this center over here. Wow. Don't want that center. We want. That work? I think that worked. Does that look symmetric? I mean, I think it does. So there we go. And we just align it, and the nut's there. Um, we probably want it to go. Actually, we probably want it to align it down to the washer. So let me just change that alignment feature. Uh, we want to align. We actually probably want to align this with this. There we go. So there we go. That is the bottom of our plunger. We have the bolt, and we have a washer, and then we have our plunger, and we're ready to continue our design. So now we've done the plunger part, the inside shaft. These are all part of the same component because apart from them being assembled, once they're assembled, they're all going to move relative to each other. They're all going to move in one piece. So there's no point making joints for these. These are all one thing. But we are going to make a new component now. Assembly, new component. Um, this one, uh, we're going to call this the casing. I'm just going to call it the case. Uh, standard, uh, press OK, no, that didn't, that didn't work. Yeah, hold on. So, assemble components. Oh yeah, we don't want that to be the parent component, because it's going to be its own component. So, standard, internal, well if I press nothing, oh the actual file, so which one's this one? Yeah. Cool, so now we have our own component. So we have a new component, case one. In this case, we're gonna make, uh, gonna do by a sketch. Um, uh, capture this position, thank you. Okay, so in this case, um, the case looks like, a, it's basically a hollow cylinder for its main part, and I measured the internal diameter is 100. So my theory, I'm gonna be revolving this so I can cheat when I make these shapes. So when I revolve it, I'm going to start by making an outer casing. I know it starts at 50, and I know the, the actual length is uh, 120, which is an extra 10. Cool. All right, so I've got this, these two lengths over here. Um, and then uh, this, uh, can I get a plunge check? Plunge check is 
1600, sorry, 160 is that. And then we, I'll bring it down later. Put this over here. This thread length is. Eighteen one eighty five. Uh, then it goes down to total length of two fifty. Two fifty is this length over here, and then over here, this is ninety five. So 95 divided by 2, that's that length, and then this length basically goes down. So we can just get a line where, because I know it connects at 45 degrees, so I can go 45, and then I'll just keep going until it touches that line. And that's the basis of that. And then the last part is, um, uh, I know it's a very tight fit in the sh for the shaft, which was 30 millimeters. So I can start by making that opening over here. How does that look? This also goes down at 45 degrees. 45 plus 90. So we've got this and it stops at 30, 65, is it much sharper than that? Oh, I guess we'll do it like this, 65, and in my particular model, the actual diameter of in here is 64. And this particular length, I'm guessing. Cool. So, I know it looks a bit weird, but the actual shape we want is hidden here somewhere. The actual shape we want is this highlighted shape I have here. This is the highlighted shape I want because um, I'm going to have the whole outer tubing over here, then it goes in. This part is open um, in my particular model because they fit like um, O-rings inside there. But this is the, the shape I want. And then I will finish this sketch. I will press the revolve, revolve tool. I'm going to press this shape. It should all be selected lovely. The axis, I already had this middle line over here. And then, oh, look at that. That's already the tube that I have here. And then I can press OK. And that's the, that's the axis that this thing rotates around. So in our particular model over here, we have a thread on the outside again. So we're going to go to thread. This whole... Um, we whole thing we have a thread on the outside here. Um, how thick is that thread going to be? Uh, in this particular one, I believe the thread count is a lot smaller. So, uh, no, we still want this. Um, we just want, instead of 120 by 6, I think we want 120 by 1.5. Ooh, that's too fine. Uh, 120 by 2. That looks more like the particular one we have here. Press OK, and now we model that. That's what the outside of this particular shock looks like. Uh, now, this is the basis of our components. Let's save our work now. Save, uh, let's call this shock. And Spring model 2022. Save. 
All right, let's show how to do a joint so we can start to see the purpose of having these two components next to each other. So we've saved. Let's go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to activate the entire model. So we can see the entire model. It's not hidden. Let's go and make a joint now. So in our assembly, we're going to go to joints. We're going to pick our two components. We can pick our component number one. Uh, so we're going to pick this body and the other moment one we want is this over here. Um, and then this is going to be a simple joint, so we're going to it's going to automatically choose the. Uh, the connection and we want a slide we want this to be a sliding joint because that's what our suspension is going to want to do and we can press the animate thing um, when we have all our parts we can change it later we can change our maximum height and depth but why is the nut not moving with it i think i have to join the nut to it but, so go to this so now the last thing we have to join is the us uh, The last thing we have to join is is the nut has to join to the outside. So I'm going to hide the case and then I want to so we want to join this nut to the bolt so we're going to press assemble, we're going to join we want to join the outside of this nut to the bottom of the washer. Uh, we want this to be a rigid joint. Nice. So now we have, we should have two joints. Oh, this joint is inside this component. But that shouldn't be an issue for us. So this joint over here, if we right click, if we animate to this joint, we should see that this is the motion that we're getting. Uh, right click. Okay, hold on. Right click, animate joint. Then, oh, why isn't it bringing the nut with it? Uh, I've got to figure that out. So, if we've, um, while I was paused, I made a rigid group by selecting all these objects in this center shaft um, and so the nut would go along with the washer and the, uh, the plunger and the, the center shaft and all that stuff. Um, if we go over here and we right click and we press animate joint, notice that just the joint is moving, but the nut is not. That's, this is like a troubleshooting feature. So we can determine when we're animating just this joint. So we can understand what that joint is doing to our system. If I press escape and if we right click and we press animate model, we see the whole object moves, including the nut and the washer, and it's all sliding up and down the shaft. But um, we'll notice that the lengths it's going, we have to actually pick some better lengths. So what we're going to do is escape. If we right-click this joint, we can actually edit the joint limits. And then I believe we can... Um, you can... Can you manually move it? or Oh, you can pick a minimum and maximum uh, limit for the joint to move. Oh. No, that's not good. Uh, you pick somewhere where it's like it's, it's height, or you just change the number value. So, um, if we want it to go, what is the maximum? Okay, so the maximum will be that. Minimum we'll put as zero, and maximum we'll put as not. What's the minus ten? Minus ooh, 200. I mean, that's looking... Uh, oh. This is looking okay. Uh, no, we'll do a bit less. So minus, minus 2, minus 170. Uh, 
and we'll, zero will be the lowest depth, right? So we change this from minus 60 to, to zero, which, and we can even animate it to show what the, the, the end limits look like, and that's morely what we want to do with our object, um, as in height-wise, it doesn't go through, um, through any extremities, because there's a whole other cap on top of here to give it that extra depth down the bottom, and we can also change our model by making the shaft longer later. But the point is we can change it, and we press OK. Now I believe if we go here and we press Animate Model, the whole thing should be moving to the limits that we previously described for that model. Cool. So now we're just, um, with the rest of your work here, we're just um, putting in other materials and other objects. You've got to, um, I think the last thing I want to show you is how we're going to model the spring. Um, not to do joints for the spring. There's a, that other video online, but um, I'm just going to show you how to model it to put it into your design. So we're going to stop this animation over here. Um, what is our model of our spring? So our spring needs, <clears throat> um, to do our spring we're going to press create, we're going to press a coil, we're going to press a plane to start our coil on over here, we're going to press the, this is not in the center but we'll fix it later. The spring I have here for demonstration purposes is 170 170 and its thickness is 2. So that's going to be 170 to 160. Yeah, no, let's do 170. It's going to be 170. And uh, this will load up another menu. Uh, we'd want way more than... We, don't, we want this to be a new... We want this to actually be a new component. And we want it to be circular. We want our revolutions to be, how many does this have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six revolutions. Six. We want our thickness to be, this is 20. That looks a bit better. That looks a bit like the spring that I currently have. Um, and then we'll move the We'll fix it up to make it flatter later, but that's basically the start of the spring that we have there. So this particular spring that I have is based off a model car spring, and they're smaller and thicker than regular car springs. So I'm actually going to take some designing freedom here and change the height of this. Oh, this spring had the height automatic. The height of this spring is 22. That looks a bit better. And revolutions, let's go five. So this spring can actually change. It gives us some room for freedom to change the height of this spring. We'll press OK. Um, now let's get a let's get a base of the spring. Now notice these aren't actually aligned. That's because um, we, we did some moving when we did some joints. Um, but we can we can align everything uh, later. For now, I'm just going to hide the shaft and the case. Um, and I'm actually going to rename this over here as the spring. Um, and our particular spring has a flat base. So I'm going to use the revolve tool again. I'll press this. And the axis, can I click the axis of this, the spring? Oh, I can't. That's disappointing. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch on this plane. I want to model the center axis of this spring, which is right down here. Finish that sketch. Um, revolve, we want to revolve this around this. Um, and this particular time I do want to join this. And this is going to be like the base of the spring, but I don't want it to be a full 360 degrees. We want it to be something like like that to make it look cool. That will give us the. Ah, uh, we can actually meld it. That's fine. These springs are. They could be forged. 
So 270 is that. And then we'll do the same thing with the spring on the base as well. Where we will revolve, we'll press this. And then uh, we have to press the same. Where'd our sketch come from? Join and again we want 270 degrees. Which shouldn't be the whole length, but there you go. That's what you want with your springs. So now they look like they're much better. They'll, they'll match the like the base of whatever object you're dealing on them with. So now let's get this object and align it for a nice photo op. So we can uh, continue our design. So we want to align. Let's align. Let's. Um, hmm. So I think we can press this body. How am I going to align this? Align. Want this spring. To. Ah, I mean, that's not exactly what I wanted. The spirit is there. Uh, it's going to be better when I have a component on top. Maybe once I get the cap. Should I do the cap? How long do I have? Hold on. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a bit of a cheaty cheat. Right, well, not cheat cheat. We're actually going to align it. But <clears throat> we're going to have it with a hidden body. So I'll... Like this spring is great for visual purposes, but for actually aligning stuff, it's pretty garbage because it's a curved surface and it's a spiral. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, while we're still editing this body, we're going to make a, um, over here, we're going to make a base for this spring. 20, like that. Um, and this over here, oh, we'll do it. that. That works, yeah. We're going to go here, we're going to extrude this out, and we're going to make this its own body. New body, but the point is, it's got to be a new body inside the spring. And so this is going to be this flat body, and I believe if we go down here, did we make it or not? Are we dealing in the wrong thing? Where are you? Oh, we're in the wrong thing. Let me go back. Um, I have to make sure, I mean, the, the spring is the active component. I have to make the spring the active component. So same thing over here. We will reference this. Make this sketch like this. Press OK. So now I'll extrude it. Now it should be in the spring body. Okay, so now this is in the spring. And when we want to do all our graphics and pretty stuff, I can just make sure to hide it. But I can also, <clears throat> excuse me, I can keep it there. So now we can actually align this to make it, uh, give it more sense. I can press over here. I can align. I can align this face with, um, let's say I want to align it with uh, this. I want to align it with this. Unhide. Whole body. Activate. Let's go and align. This with I don't want the center shaft, please. All I want is, there we go. That, okay, now if I show it, they should all be aligned now. Press okay. So now the spring is aligned inside perfectly. And then um, when I don't need it, I can hide this body, but I can always use this uh, later when I make like a part that it actually attaches to, 
I can have that body there and hide it um, when it's not relevant to my design. All right, so let's speed run spring animation percent over here. We are going to hide things we don't need. We don't need the center and the shaft. So we're going to find a way to animate this spring because right now Fusion doesn't like the spring being animated and there's no way to truly animate the spring because realistically the spring is infinite many atoms, relatively speaking, and they're all moving individually and relating to each other. But what we can do is we can simulate this spring into a series of semi springs, semi donuts, semi circles. And we're going to get those to try to relate to each other. So we're going to hide things we don't need. We don't need that. What is this sketch? We don't need this sketch over here. All right, so we just want to keep a nice, lovely spring over here. Uh, in fact, we'll even hide this joint. So how we do this is we're going to turn this into hemis semi circles. So we will make a we, um, we're going to ignore these two three-quarter circles on the side, but we're going to start the rotation from this joint over here. So first we've got to split up our spring. Let me just check if I'm still recording. Yes. We're going to split up this spring. We're going to go to modify. We're going to go to split body. Uh, we want to capture this position. The body we want to split is, this is our spring, and the splitting tool that we want to split it with is... If we want to try to get to this face, but it's not letting us get to this face. So um, we want to, uh, yeah, and just go through it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't exist. Yeah, but the plane's not aligned, unfortunately. I'll do it. I'll just do it through here, I guess. Hold on. I know what I'll do. I'll make a. Uh, Plane at an angle, capture position. We want this. Contract uh, offset plane, capture position. We want this plane. How far do we want to offset? We want to offset it to here. There we go. That's just because we've moved everything. If everything is nice for you, you don't have to move that. But the point is this plane is going to cut the spring at this particular angle. So. Where was I? Um, not modify, we want to split body. We want to split this particular body. The splitting tool we want is this over here. And it's going to go through the entire object and see how that's going to split our spring in multiple pieces. Okay, cool. So now we have a lot of bodies to deal with. So we are going to start making joints for these individual bodies. Um, Oh, I think we have to make them all into components now as well. So if we right click, uh, create a components from bodies, click that. And so inside the spring, these should all have individual components now. All right, so we have these individual components. Let's start by doing some joints. So if we are going to here, um, so we want to, and we're going to try doing it as built joint, which it says here it wants to do like relative positions to another. So I think that could be because we've moved our spring from our original uh, alignment. So we want to start by joining this body. Oh, no. That's a problem for someone else. We're not going to do that. So we're going to... So <laughs> As we're joined, we don't want to deal with any of these first two because you see how there's that connection over there? That's going to be annoying to deal with. So we're going to start by joining this to here. This is going to be the first connection. It's going to be the first joint. And the joint we want here is we want to make a revolve joint. Did that work? Two components. How are you revolved? There we go. So that's the first thing we want, is you want to have that revolve joint around that axis, and we press OK, and then we just ooh, copy that a thousand times. So as built joint, uh, we press this and this, and then we want it to be revolved, so we just press this over here. Nice. OK. As built joint, this and this. 
That is our joint, yep. Don't know why this. Yeah, it's just a lot. Um, uh, we're almost done. Because just like the top, we're not going to finish the entire. <gasps> oh, I think we've. I think they're wrong. Mm, oh, we'll see. I mean, they're definitely wrong, but how wrong is the question? Because when we did the revolve, when I did the revolve, I revolved it around the corner, but it should be revolving around the center. Yeah. But I believe, yeah. Oh no. Uh, where are all these joints? These joints are all down here. I can fix these because I just got to go to every joint and just change the angle that it goes on. Edit joint. The oh, that one was fine. Okay. The second one was not. Yes. Unfortunately, there's no like quick snap. Uh, there's there's no um, copy function uh, for now. I'm also trying to get all the flags to be in the same direction because I believe that helps us later uh, when we're. I think that's going to help us later when we uh, put some restraints on this. This last one is fine. All right, so these are all the joints. So now we can see if we try moving a component, oh, that, that, that's not good. If we try to animate all the joints, we're going to get a, a hilarious thing to happen. If I press animate model, <laughs> they're not working. Do any of them work? No, okay, just one works. Uh, I've got to have one of them as the ground. Let's make this bottom. Let's make this joint over here, this component. Can we make that ground? And I believe, which component are you? You're this one? This component is the ground. So now, can I actually animate some of these? All right, don't know why they're not all working, but let's start by... So I don't... Um, I think I can... I can motion link all these joints together. Where I can say... Oh, that looks really cool. Uh, 10. 10. Right, so they're going to be motion linked together, sure. And then, um, Ooh. That's 
five. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is what I saw of watches. Chaos. Okay. <laughs> it does look pretty cool, right? Ah, no. All right, so now, oh, let's see how this works. Animate model. What? <laughs> Alright, well what's what's actually happening here? I think Yeah. It's not right. Um I think I think the issue is like every second one has to be why is that half a motion like Every second one of these motion links has to be negative, I think. Edit feature, like, I think one of them has to be minus. Or, well, sorry, I could just reverse it, right? I think uh, 10, edit feature. Which one did I do? Just, which one did I just edit? I'd say the odds. So 10, 12. Oh. oh, that's just bad. That's just too much. It looks cool, right? I'm going to say no. Oh, really? Oh. All right, all right. All right. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. All right, we're close, we're close. Sheesh. That's me, that's really Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know. So, uh, I don't know why it's moving out. <laughs> yeah, it's like... It's yeah. like every second one is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do we have to like make it like two degrees? Like two degrees? Well, that's to stop it going crazy. Yeah. So, no, I don't think it's going to be Does that need dimension? Sweet. 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 Well, well, that's cool. Something's that's happening. Uh, I got I, I got to continue working on this one. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes. All right. So if we get to a point where we have our motion links, uh, we can get the equation. To, we can get this to almost work. So if I was to right-click this and press animate model, we get some sort of almost good-looking spring thing here. Uh, but it needs some fine-tuning. So I'm going to get a tutorial. Uh, I'll do a tutorial uh, where I just try to get this spring working on our system uh, and we'll go from there. But for now, this is the end of this tutorial. Um, you need the shaft and the outer case, you need at least that sliding joint uh, to work.